Praise Yahuwah, brothers and sisters. Praise the Most High. He's so worthy of all praise, honor, and esteem. And we reverence him. Baruch are all those who revere Yahuwah and those who walk in his ways. To revere him doesn't mean to give him some mouth, you know, what is it called lip service. Oh, we honor you. No, it means to live in a way that honors him. So today we're going to be talking about having no fellowship with darkness. Ephesians 5, 1. Therefore be followers of the Most High as dear children, and walk in love as he has loved us. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as set apart ones. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, that are not convenient but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of the Most High Sovereign One. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of the Almighty upon the children of disobedience. Therefore be not partakers with them, for you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light. Walk as children of light. For the fruit, the evidence of the Ruach HaKadosh is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable to the great, almighty deliverer and king. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things that are done of them in secret. But let all things that are reproved be made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake you that sleep, you who are unaware of the times, and arise from the dead, and you shall have light. He shall give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeem in the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but learn what the will of the Father is. It's a shame to even speak of the things that they're doing in secret. So when you think about these celebrities and, and news comes out about some of their things that they're doing we shouldn't be surprised they're in darkness so we should not be following up on it and getting all caught up in that or if someone tells us something about someone if it's true we ought not to um, relish in it and share it First Samuel 12 and turn not aside for then should you go after vain things so stay, don't don't turn away from Yahuwah because if we do we're going to go after vain things and those vain things cannot profit nor deliver for they are vain for the Most High will not abandon his people for his great name's sake because it has pleased him to make us his people Yahshayahu 2, verse 5. O house of Yaakov, come, and let us walk in the light of the Most High Yah. Ephesians 4, 22. Beginning with verse 22. Put off concerning the former conversation of the old man who was corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Remember, we're new creatures, right? So let's put off those old ways. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that we put on the new man who after the most high is created in righteousness and true dedication wherefore put in away lie and speak every man truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another be angry and not transgress let not the sun go down upon your anger neither give wrath to the evil one let him that stole still no more but rather let him work 
working with his hands the things that is good that he may have to good give to him that is in need mm. so in doing that that will hinder someone else from being tempted to steal because we're giving to those who are in need let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that that is good to the use of edifying that it may minister kindness to the hearers minister compassion to the hearers when we give encouraging words and grieve not the raw of the great one the almighty yahuwah let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice the other day a lady was telling me about her daughter who um is not in agreement with some things this lady does this other lady does and um she got word through a mutual um, relationship that she had given her son something for his birthday and she's like I don't want that she's I don't want anything to do with her and when the person told her that it was a card she took the card and opened it and saw it was a $50 um, gift card or you know visa card whatever those credit card things you can get and she went and cashed it not remembering the principle that she was standing on. And then I'm reminded of a lady who, she and her family are vegan. And her older daughter who is, she's out of high school. She may be 20. But she met a young man that she's interested in. And she was telling her mom about him. And the mom said, he is a nice young man, but he's he's a meat eater. When I think about that story, I say, wow. There are people in the world who have more dedication and allegiance to things than we do about things that don't line up with the Torah. She said, He's gonna have a certain scent about him. He's a meat eater. So whatever we stand against, we can't for whatever reason then give in to it. Or how about when we see someone, and this happened to me the other day and I was um, rebuked for it, so I'm sharing it with you, which I tell you oftentimes, the things I know is because I had to be taught and had to be sat down and said, you know, that's not right. <laughs> You shouldn't have done that. Um, so there's a man in, in the grocery store where I attend. And they some people say, well, I have heard that he, um, his affection is of that of the, his gender. And I have never seen him in it. I don't know. But he likes to talk to me when I go to the store. And I was leaving out the store and he did not see me. His back was to me. And I called out to him. And he didn't see me. And just as I did, that's when Father <clears throat> corrected me and told me, why would you do that? You could have just gone out that store without him seeing you. And I was like, I did. But then he saw me. and But yeah, I was still protected because he couldn't talk. So we just waved and, and he said something. I'll talk to you later or something. And I, I left that store thinking, wow, how often do we do that? Yes, we had to be kind to people, but I didn't have to go out of my way. I didn't have to go out of my way, and I should not. And you know what? I will not anymore. And then it could be times when it's not even as drastic as that, just someone just being in the world and could escape without talking to them or just say a quick hi, hey, and keep walking. But if we, if we go out of our way to make it seem like we want to converse with them, then we're st we find ourselves in conversations that we're not even happy about. And we're like, oh my goodness. And then Father's not pleased. So 
Having no fellowship with darkness does not mean that we're not kind to them and we can't speak to them, we can't help them, especially our, you know, neighbors or relatives, but we don't have fellowship with them. There's a difference. Look how crowded that, that sidewalk is with those people. Of course, that has to be a big city. I think I know what city, but I could be wrong, so I'm not even gonna say what city I think it is. Who do you think in there might be a Kodesh, might be one of our brothers and sisters? But look how many of them it is. And look how hard we'd have to look to try to find one of our, us. Romans 13, verse, beginning with verse 10. Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore do away with the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. And put on Yahushua HaMashiach and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived, evil communications corrupts good manners. Awake, awake to righteousness. Arise to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of Alua, and I speak this to your shame. Amos 3, verse 3, can two walk together except they agree? Why are we in fellowship with people who don't even agree with us? Christianity is not in agreement with us. I have the hardest time. The more I'm coming into more light, I have a hard time talking to people in the church because they keep throwing those titles around. They don't even know they're not even talking about, I've come to realize, seeing with real eyes, that we're not even talking about the same Ruach. We're not even talking about, we're, we're, we're two different worlds. Second Corinthians 6, beginning with verse 14. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness? And what communion does light have with darkness? And what concord or agreement has righteousness with wickedness? Or what part has he that believes with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of Alua with idols? For you are the Hakab of the living Alua, as Alua has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their Alayim, and they shall be my people. Verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them and be separate, says Yahuwah, the Almighty, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Almighty. Touch not the unclean thing. That doesn't necessarily mean with our hands, but it could be our conversations. It could be the things that we watch on TV, the music or whatever we're listening to. Touch not the unclean thing. Did he not tell Adam to not partake of that tree? Tahalim 141.5 Let the righteous one strike me and it be kindness. Let him reprove me and it will be like oil on my head. And I don't want my head to refuse it, but I want my petition to always be against evil deeds. Galatians 4, 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? So what often happens is we get so used to the way the world does things, giving us flattery and half telling, half truths they call it, which is no such thing, but half truths and, and everything. And so when someone comes to us with, truth 
based on the Torah, Yah's instructions, we sometimes take offense. And so then we have to look and say, why am I taking offense? But instead, I want to be, as is written in Tahalim 141, I want it to be a kindness if, if the righteous strike me with a word. Because Masal 28 verse 26 or 26 verse 28 says a flattery mouth works ruins. Flattery are lies. They're traps. It's going to bring nothing but ruins. So that's the difference between being in company with truth bearers. They're not going to be flattering us and helping us in our um, evil ways. They're going to be help. We're going to be helping each other to make it. So why would we want to be fellowship with the world when they're not going to tell us the truth? Well, they don't know truth to tell us. So how can two walk together except they agree? What agreement has righteousness with wickedness? Or what part has he with a believer, with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has one who is of a lure with idols? What communion does light have with darkness? What fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness? We will be unequally yoked if we have fellowship with the world. Now, once again, use wisdom. Use wisdom. We have to work with people. And sometimes at work they have different things and that's not what I was talking about. This fellowship is a deep spiritual type connection relationship. How do we do it with family? He'll give us wisdom. I remember my mom first when she changed from being one sect of Christianity to another one. That one was a little bit stricter by, by they were living by the word a little bit more tight. And and even me, when I came into that. We were told not to have fellowship with people that are not walking in that way. And oh boy, what a way that was. But y'all will give us wisdom. He's not, he's love. Work is no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And now I'm going to leave it there. And that's why you have the Ruah. He will teach us. And he will show us. With each situation. First Johannine 4, verse 5. They are of the world, and therefore speak they of the world. The world hears them. We are of Alua. He that knows the Most High hears us. He that is not of Alua does not hear us. Hereby know we the rule of truth, and that one of and that one of error. So there's a difference. We should know the difference between the rule of truth and the oneness of error. Remember, in the same chapter, verse 1, he says, Try every spirit. Try every spirit, for not every spirit is of Yahuwah. First Johanna 2, beginning with verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that does the will of our Father abides forever. Once again, a reminder of what we get caught up in with all this technology that we all are so used to. I mean, it is um, almost minute by minute um, interaction. We got headlines coming on our phones, headlines on TV. We cannot be following all of that. We are not of this world. When we hear things, we can ask Father what he wants to do about it. Are we, to, are we supposed to talk to him about it? Is there something we can do about it? But we ought not be all caught up in it. This is not our home. Mashal 22 verse 24. Make no friendship with an angry man. Mashal being Proverbs. Make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man. You shall not go. You might learn his ways and get a snare to your soul. And that's, and you can put 
angry. You could put anything in place of angry. Um, whoremonger, a thief, a liar, anything. And if we go that way when that to that friendship, we might learn their ways. Well, didn't we read? If we haven't read, we will be reading. Yeah, we did read it. Be not deceived, evil communications, corrupt good manners. Don't make friendship with people with certain ways that don't line up with Father's instructions. And be mindful. I was sharing with a young lady whose marriage is dissolving or has dissolved, and suddenly this woman has started befriending her. They worked together, but they were never that close. The way she tells the story. And I was telling her to be very careful with that because this other lady likes ladies. And I have known of cases where those women know what they're doing. And when that hurting woman is broken down and crying and needing that, she turns to that friend who understands things happen. I had a friend who was in her 40s and got into a relationship like that and it lasted maybe 10 years, 7 to 10 years. And this woman had been married several times, a couple of times. I put I don't want to seem like she was like the woman at the well. She was she didn't have that many husbands, but um she had been married a couple of times and had adult children and grandchildren and was in this relationship because she got beguiled. know what we're doing. I'm going to end with Luke 6, verse 22. Let me get the scriptures. Luke 6, 22, beginning with 22. I'm preparing for that just also to think about on the job when they start offering promotions we know whether that we deserve a promotion or not sometimes people will use us by with the words of flattery to get us to do something for them it's not about us and we know if we deserve a promotion or not the promotions do come from y'all when he sees our integrity and our willingness to live for him in the midst of unbelievers but there's a difference between that and getting a promotion that we really don't deserve no more than we should keep change extra change when we get our change back at it from a cashier and we know it's too much we don't deserve that's not ours we ought not to be taking promotions that are not ours because flattery works ruins Matthew 10 verse 16 says that he sends us out as sheep in the midst of wolves. But he says, therefore be as wise as serpents, yet as harmless as doves. We can get around all that by being as harmless as doves, but wise because we speak with the wise one who leads and guides us and directs us out of snares and traps of the evil one. We have no fellowship with them in darkness. So Luke 6, verse beginning with verse 22. Be honored when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall criticize, reproach you, or accuse you and attack your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Be honored. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in Hashamim. For in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. 
verse 26, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. So let's look at this again. Verse 22 says, Be honored when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company. Verse 26 says, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. So did their fathers to the false prophets. We ought not to be fitting in with them. We ought not to be fitting with them. And I was just thinking about this the other day about me, like, you know, talking to, you know, trying to get that um, cashier's attention at the store and just things, you know, just being friendly. That was such a big thing when I was growing up about being friendly and called gregarious and just popular and just, oh, just outgoing and um, what do they call it? Introverts and extroverts and all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's so, okay. Well, there's a way that we can be kind and not be friendly with the world. We have, we need his wisdom. You know what? He will, we're, we're that clay, we're, we're like clay, right? That's what the scripture said. I think it's Jeremiah, Jeremiah, clay. He's let him mold us and make us into what we got to be because it's not going to be that easy to get in. And I'm, it's just, it's it's not as easy it's not as easy as, as, as it's not gonna be easy that's a whole nother topic if we're supposed to be if Yahushua came and was our example I'm a long ways away a long ways away he came to fulfill the law and the prophets I'm a long ways away so one thing we can do, among all the other things, but we can add to our list is to be mindful of whether or not we have fellowship with darkness. Not neighborhoodness, you know, like you be your neighbors, not that. Friendship, spiritual deep relationships with people who don't who are who are not in your who is sheepfold like I said he says he's sending us out as sheep in the midst of wolves if we're his sheep we're in the midst of wolves therefore be as wise as serpents as harmless as we can still be having conversations with them and be in control of the conversation not them controlling us so with that, brothers and sisters, remember we are to come out from among them and be separate. It says, Yahuwah the Almighty, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Almighty. Be not deceived, evil communications, corrupt good manners. Rise to righteousness and sin not. How can two walk together except they agree? Know that the time is at hand. It is high time for us to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Be honored when men shall hate us and when they shall separate us from their company and shall criticize us or accuse us and attack our name as though we're evil. And it's all for the son of man's sake. Have no fellowship, brothers and sisters. We cannot afford to have fellowship. Fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. We've got to reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things that are done of them in secret. Let's walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but being wise, redeeming the time, because the days are truly, truly, truly evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but learn what the will of the Father is, and don't turn aside from his truth, for then we should go at the vain things that cannot profit nor deliver. For they are vain. 
O house of Yaakov, come and let us walk in the light of the Most High Yah. Let us put off concerning the former conversation the old man who is corrupt according to deceitful lust. And be renewed in the ruach of your mind and put on the new man who after the Most High is created in righteousness and true dedication. Wherefore put away lying, speak every man truth to his neighbor. Don't be flattering people. Tell them the truth. And Yah help us not to give place to the evil one. And Yah help us let the no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouth. But that what we speak brings edification and that it ministers hope, life, truth to the hearer. And Yah help us not to grieve your Ruach, O Great One. Until next time, brothers and sisters, continue to be encouraged. Continue to walk this walk. Revere Yahuwah and walk in His ways. It's tight. That's straight and narrow. It's straight. There ain't no crooks and turns and curves. No, it's straight. And it's narrow. And we don't have fellowship with the works of darkness. If you can see Christianity as being darkness, it'll change, it'll change things, it'll change things. It is not of Yah. When you really think of some of the teachings that they taught. Well, at least taught me. I know where I know where I know what I was taught. And I'm not saying everything because I, I got some good, I got some good teaching. But there were some things that were of error. It's so sad there's some people there. But you know what I do? There's a scripture in the book of Acts that said they say that y'all save those saved daily such as should be saved. And so that's what I said. I said, y'all, thank you for whoever it is you're bringing out of darkness today. Bringing them into this light. You know what? I'm going to see if I can find that real, real quick. Oh, my goodness. A, a, a scripture just came to me. Um, and um, uh, yes. Oh, thank you, Father. I'm just trying to see how far back to 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 read. Um, well, I'll just read this one. I'll start with this one, um, verse nine, First Kepha, chapter two, verse nine. Very familiar to a lot of people. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a kodosh nation, a set apart nation, a peculiar people. Y'all's character seen in us that makes us peculiar in this world that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light in time past you were not a people but are now the people of Elua, Elohim who have obtained his kindness, his compassion who had not obtained it but now have obtained it Have in your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works that they shall behold and esteem Yahuwah in the day of visitation. All right, I can close now. I appreciate that, y'all. So in his great and mighty name, we give all praises to him. We are encouraged in him. He will not abandon us. He's gonna. He's walking with us through this. He's leading us. His sheep follow him. They know his voice. He is our rohe. We shall not want nor lack for anything. He's with us. And his rod and his staff will comfort us. When we fall, when we let sheep get their heads caught in fencing and all that kind of stuff, the shepherd knows what to do. <laughs> Y'all knows what to do when we get caught up in stuff. Until next time, brothers and sisters, stay encouraged and stay encouraged and watch the fellowships that we have. 
Start bringing that before Yah. Is this a good thing? But you know what? The more worry we get, the more we read the laws, and the Lord, the more we stay before Yah, we, we, we start knowing, because the Ruah will say, uh-uh, uh-uh. But let him give you wisdom. That's what I'm wanting, wisdom. Praise Yah, praise Yah. Until next time. All praises be to the one and only one who deserves all praise. The King of Kings, the Sovereign One, the Self-Existent One, the One who has all power. All power. We're on the winning side. All power. Praise Him. I love you, brothers and sisters. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Let's not be in the crowd. If we're in that crowd, our light should be shining some kind of way. And maybe not necessarily walking through the streets like that, but when people have encounters with us, they should know they're not like those. They're, they're different. And with, with that difference, remember he said, because we can't be above the master. If he went through what he went through, the servant can't be above the master. We're going to be ridiculed. We're going to be lied on. Talk to you soon. Let's deepen our relationship with the Most High. He's the one we need. Above all else. <laughs>